What's up y'all, it's Fitch and I'm back today with a new video. So today I'm going to be doing some photography filmmaking 101 with you and going down to the basics. So today we're going to talk about aperture, shutter speed and ISO. Three elements of a camera that in order for you to create photos, videos uh, with a camera, you should know and be able to master and understand when to bring those up or down depending on the situation you want to produce. All right, so let's start with shutter speed. So the shutter speed is basically the speed at which the shutter in your camera, uh, usually with uh, DSLRs, uh, would close and open, okay? So your camera, inside the camera the body has a shutter and basically what it does is that it opens to let light come in which is information uh when you're taking your photos and it closes right right after and that's when you have your photo so in your camera settings you can adjust the speed of your shutter speed right and usually that speed is written with the number one a slash and a number after that. So what that means is that the speed of your shutter is calculated in fractions of a second. So basically, if your shutter speed is one um, uh, of 30, basically that means that your shutter is opening and closing at 1 30th of a second, right? So if you do one out of 100, that means your shutter is opening at one uh, hundredth of a second. And that seems very, very fast, but to be honest, um, it depends on the situation, right? So again, the the higher the number, like the fraction, the faster your shutter will open and close. So if your shutter speed is at a thousand of a second, one out of a thousand, then it's opening and closing very fast. And if it's at uh, a thirtieth of a second, then it's relatively slow. Now, why would you use a faster shutter speed? Why would you use a slower shutter speed? Depends on what situation you're facing. For example, let's say you're doing sport photography and you are um, taking photos of an athlete running very, very fast, like someone like Houston Bolt. You need the picture to be crisp, clear, and n with no blur, right? So because that person, your subject, is going very fast, you need your shutter speed to open and close very, very fast as well because it has to keep up with the person moving. If your shutter speed is moving too slow, what's gonna happen is that the object that's moving is gonna go in and out of uh, its position between the time that the shutter open and closes. So let's say your shutter opened and the and using bolt is here, then your shutter closes and the using bolt is here, then he has moved uh, in between the time that the shutter open and close, which means that when you have your photo at the end, it's gonna look blurry, right? So you want to have your shutter move faster or to open and close faster than the object you're taking if you want that object to be crisp and not to be blurry. Now, obviously, there are situations where you would want your subject to be blurry. Uh, for example, when you see those photos of a highway and you have all those cars moving but you barely see the cars, you only see the lights, the, 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 the beams of light moving. This is accomplished when you slow down the shutter all the way to usually about 15 seconds, not one, not one fifteenth of a second, 15 seconds. So the shutter takes 15 seconds to open and close around that time and you leave it open. Now, obviously you have to have your camera on a tripod because it's gonna start shaking if you have it in your hand and you will not get the same effect. But if you do that and you keep it on a tripod and you click, wait 15 seconds and it closes, you will see that what happens is that because the, the, the cars are traveling so fast in and out of that 15 second window, all you're gonna see is the, is the beams of light and that's how you get those type of shots. So you have to understand when you want to use a faster shutter speed or a slower shutter speed. Now, like I said, the shutter closes and opens faster, right? So what would that mean? That would mean that the light that comes in your camera has less time, right? So less time for light to come in means a darker photo. So you also have to understand that the higher your shutter speed gets, the darker your photo will be because you're allowing less light to come in because light has less time to come in. So let's say your photo or your video is at 4,000th of a second, then obviously it's gonna be darker than if it was at 1 30th 
of a second. So you have to understand how that works as well and how if you have a higher shutter speed, then the image will be darker. So think about what you're shooting, what you want to shoot and which shutter speed you would apply to which scenario you know let's say i'm shooting people that are just walking maybe i'll just use 150 uh, 150th of a second you know or if i'm moving objects that are not moving that are not moving if i'm shooting objects that are not moving then it might be much slower so you have to think about that and figure out what you want to do uh, in which situation now let's move on to the next part which is the aperture so the aperture or the f-stop in photography or t-stop in film uh is basically has to do with the lens and not the camera itself so when you attach a lens with your camera the lens has a aperture right some lenses have variable aperture uh, usually zoom lenses uh and but most lenses have fixed aperture so basically that means that um, your lens uh, the iris in your lens opens and closes, right? So the the more you close your, your your iris, the bigger the number of the aperture, and the more you open the iris, the smaller the number becomes. So for example, if your aperture is f 1.8, then your iris is wide open. And if the aperture is f22, then the iris is very, very closed. Now, what does that create? So when your iris is wide open, you have a shallower depth of field. Now, what that means is that the distance in which a subject is in focus is very, very narrow. So for example, uh, the lens that I'm using right now is a f2.8 lens. So this is a pretty shallow depth of field. So which means that the focus range is very narrow. So if I move forward, I'm out of focus. If I move too much backward, I'm out of focus because it's a very narrow focus. Now, if I move it all the way to f22, then if I move forward, I'll probably still be in focus. And if I move backward, I'll still be in focus because then the uh, the focus range is much, much, much larger, right? The depth of the focus, the depth of field is much larger. So now when would you use something that has more, um, depth of field or something that has less depth of field, you know, when would you want to have that bokeh look? Uh, bokeh is basically the blur that you have in the background when you shoot your photos or your videos. So it depends again on the situation and what you're shooting. For example, let's say I want to shoot portraits outside. A lot of portraits, you would want to use a more shallow depth of field because you want to separate your subject from the background. So you would have a f2.8, f1.8, f even f1.4 aperture when you're doing uh, portraits, right? Uh, now. Why would you want to use a F22 or F16? Let's say you're doing landscape photography and you have to take photos of big mountains and big, big landscape. You want everything to be in focus. You don't just want one part of the image in focus. So you would want a aperture that would be like F F16, F20, right? Now, again, the iris also has uh, a light component. So basically, the more you close the iris, less light can go in because it's a smaller hole to go through, right? So the bigger your aperture, the bigger your f-stop, so if your f-stop is at f22, then that means the smaller the iris is closed, that means you have less light that can come in, right? And the more the iris is open, uh, the your apertures are f2.8, f1.8, then there's more light that can come in. So what that means is that when you have an aperture, an f-stop that's that's more wide open, you have more light that can come in. So you have to think about that when you're doing photography or videography, right? If you're trying to shoot at f5, f6, you're gonna understand that you're gonna need more light because it, the image will get darker. So now you start to understand how you can work with the shutter speed and work with the f-stop to try to, to work with the light situation that you have. Let's say, for example, you're in a bright daylight, environment and you want to shoot a very shallow depth of field but you scared that too much light will come in your shutter right then you can bump up the shutter speed which will decrease the amount of light that comes in and still allow you to have a wide uh, 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 open iris same thing if you're shooting in a low light situation and you want to still have more light come in but your um, your f-stop is at f5 because your lens doesn't allow you to go all the way to f2.8 then you will want to start to work with 
your shutter speed and bring your shutter speed down to let more light in. So you start to understand how these work uh, in comparison to each other. And now the final component I wanted to talk about is the ISO. So the ISO is a more electronic component because uh, the other ones were more physical, right? The f-stop and the shutter speed things open and closes, right? So it's more about physical components. So basically the ISO is the light sensitivity of your camera sensor. So what that means is how sensitive is your sensor to the light? So for example, if the lower the number of your ISO, the least sensitive the sensor will be. The higher the number, the more sensitive. That means that the higher you put the number, the more the more a smaller amount of light will make the photo brighter or the video brighter. Now that also comes with its side effects. The higher you put your aperture, the more digital grain or noise you're gonna have in your image and the, and, and the image will start to decompose. So you have to understand that depending on the camera you have, you don't wanna bump up your ISO too much. Honestly, the ISO is the last thing I would want to bump up if I'm working on an image or a video because I know that it's digital and it will create noise, right? So you want to have your ISO as low as possible uh, when it comes to photography or have your ISO at its native ISO when you're doing videography to have the most dynamic range as possible. So think about how these work in comparison to each other and what situation you're in and when you want to lower your ISO or up your shutter speed or lower your f-stop and think about those. And again, think about the situation you're in who is your subject, what you're shooting, and what will make more sense for the subject you're shooting. So that's everything for today, guys. Hopefully I didn't uh, take too much of your day and hopefully you learned something. Uh, if you guys wanna see more, don't forget to go to my channel and watch other videos. There's a ton of other videos out there. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you have anything else you wanna say, just leave that in the comment section. Thank you very much and I'm out. Peace.